Hello, this is Dom. This is Tom from Blackface Studio, and tonight we are doing a uh, eighth edition special. Mm -hmm. As you all know, it has been announced. In case you've been under a rock, yeah, for the, for the yeah. last week, you've to be pretty not connected with the forty k world not to know about it. Yeah. So, <laughs> um, so tonight we're going to talk through what eighth edition is going to change for forty k. A lot, apparently what it means for your army and what it means really for the studio and, and going forward. How we, you know, how we feel about it maybe as well, just sort of throw yeah. some stuff in there, a bit of freestyle. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I'm not going to lie to you, like, we've, we've had a little bit to drink. Yeah. And so we might go on a little tangent and just, just bear with us during this, okay? Yeah. So, Tom, you've obviously done a bit more research. I've got a few, got a couple of sheets of paper here with a, a few of the key points written on. Yeah, just so we can have a few things to sort of start off and, and discuss about. Um, <clears throat> so, obviously, um, 8th is here, is soon, um, and a lot of changes have been happening. Um, we're just gonna, I'm just going to pick a few points from here as we, uh, as we plough in on here. Um, so, um, I think, just starting with sort of an overarching thing, obviously, I think play styles are going to change quite a bit. Yeah, yeah. So um, they've got three, haven't they? They've got yeah. They've announced three changes essentially. So you've got your. I think it's very similar to the Age of Sigma style of thing. So you're going to have your kind of narrative play. Yeah. Uh, but you're going to also have your match play, and I think there's um, open an open kind of play. Yeah. But there's going to be some. I think the open play's got that kind of a, a broad matching of armies. Yeah. Based on a power level. Yeah. Which you ca calculate um, using. Whatever on the rule sheet is, I presume, where you don't pick your upgrades, so to speak. I think it's more to do with uh, um, you get what you model them with, and that yep. gives you a power level from what I can sort of glean from it, I think. Right, okay. Whereas match play it goes down to a granular level, so you do your upgrades and it's directly point related. Yeah, so match play is pretty much what you'd think 40k is yeah. at the moment. Even with your like your uh, your your cities of death, etc. Yeah, it's still yeah. match play. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, that that match play is pretty much what you've got at the moment. The open play is a little bit different, and then of course you've got narrative, which I'm kind of excited about. Yeah, narrative. I think I think I think narrative is going to be good because they've already said they're going to provide possibly a framework for it. Yeah. Be better, and obviously they'll probably provide actual scenarios that lead into doing a narrative campaign. Yeah. Ways you can put different armies in and out of it, most likely. So, yeah, lots so of opportunity for doing stuff. I kind of hope with the uh, narrative play, it's my personal spin. I'm going to be very optimistic about this, by the way, throughout <laughs> the video. Me too. Yeah, Me too. so the narrative play, in my eyes, will be along the lines of Fall of Cadia, where you're given this story arc, and in this yeah. it will be like, you need a platoon of uh, Militarum Tempestus, a couple of squads of Templars, yeah. blah, 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 this is what you've got, and for Chaos, Defend against the horde. Defend against the horde. <laughs> but, um, yeah, you kind of like, you've given this list, and this is a storyline you're going yeah. to do. And for a large collection um, kind of player like yourself and yeah. myself, you, you've got a nice selection, and that means you can utilise different bits yeah. and you can get involved in the story. And you're not you're not worrying about optimising or specking units. You just basically here's my models. We're going to have a grand old narrative game. Yeah, as it as it's been written and how you want to play it. Yeah, out, so. exactly. So uh, yeah, I'm excited about that, and and also. Equally wise with match play. Yeah, I'm quite excited about that because they've obviously kept it very similar. They haven't sort of just gone. Um, I think Asuma had a, a way of doing where you just you had what was on the model. Yeah. Whereas, but they've kept the granular system now, so you can still do your upgrades. Yeah. So you can still customize your armies a bit. Um, <clears throat> so still having that as an option, I'm quite excited about that as well because yeah. I imagine it's going to be rebalanced. Yeah, and also that means for people that already got armies at the moment, like ourselves, and you're you guys, they, the models you have, you can use. Yeah. You're not going to be going, well, I've been customising it this way, and on the data slate or whatever, the scroll, I can't use it. So this means now you can, you can take the upgrades and you can, of yes. course, uh, play Essentially, the although they've confirmed that obviously all codecs have been invalidated, yeah. <laughs> they've also confirmed that I think we're getting five new books at the beginning, yeah. uh, which are going to cover every model that's currently available. So... <clears throat> uh, I don't think there's anything to complain about. Really. No, no, and a free rule book. And a free rule book, of course. Yes, yeah, so the core rules being free, which is probably the first time in, well, since I started playing. Yeah, no, it's the first time. I think Games like, Workshop, uh, except for Age of Sigma, have yeah. done something like this, which is, free, which is brilliant. So leap forward if you compare yeah. it to other games systems out there. Exactly. It's very nice that GW have yeah. jumped on that bandwagon and have kind of pushed themselves forward, which I, is brilliant. I would say it's probably more of a concentration back to doing nice models and some rules with them. 
but here's your rules to play with for free. You don't have to worry about that. That's always going to be there for you yeah. to use. And you know, every year I presume there'll be a general's handbook on description like we got with Sigma, with kind of like a living rule book. So there will yeah. always be something being tweaked or changed if there's a problem, which mm. is so much more positive than it has been in the past where you're stuck with a, a rule set for two or three years. People get very frustrated. Lots of FAQs come out and you get kind of like... Yeah. You're like, you're just going, oh, was that in this one? No, in this... Uh, yeah, so very positive change. Yeah, definitely, yeah. definitely. I, mean, I think a lot of people at the moment are thinking, oh, this is very Age of Sigma. And to be fair, it is, but Age yeah. of Sigma had uh, a bit of a stigma on the Sigma. Definitely. <laughs> where it was released in a, a horrendous yeah. way. Yeah. The world changed, everything changed, and a lot of fantasy players obviously went low or yeah. tried to do it. But Games Workshop have learned a lot from Age of Sigma definitely. the last 12 months, 18 months, how they've yeah. changed it. And they've gone, right, this works, this doesn't work, we're going to put this into our 40k yeah. game. Yeah. And they, did, they did come looking with a double barrel shotgun and say, let's get rid of the fluff and the rules yeah. and you know, see how it goes. That, yeah. that, so they've thought about this and you can tell that from all their key, recent interviews that they've, they've done play testing, they've done sort of discussions about it and they've talked to people that are involved with running events and stuff. So I think if it's not being accepted by this phase, it wouldn't be coming out. Yeah. So, <clears throat> yeah. Um, so Sorry. next thing we'll be going on to a bit more in depth about like the rules in rules. general. Yeah. So one of the main things as well is the movement is back. Yes. Movement distances are good. So <laughs> I'm guessing Elder and Nids are going to move faster than Orcs yes. and Guardsmen. Yeah, have you, have you seen, a, I think they released a couple of the unit profiles, didn't they, the other day? Uh, I think it was yesterday. Um, just with, I think it was the Dreadnought, the Marines and a couple of the units. Yeah. Sort of, just, to give an yeah. so just to give an example. Um, so for the Terminators move five inches. Yes, the Marines move six inches. Yeah, I think the Treadnought was. I think it might have been six as well. But it just shows that they're they're thinking about how a unit would move based on its armaments, on its physiology probably as well, and things like so. As I said, Eldar probably going to be a lot quicker. Yeah, yeah. Which I, I, I for one I support. Yeah, quite frankly, because it, it makes sense. <clears throat> you wouldn't have a marine moving the same speed as uh, a banshee. No, no, you wouldn't. And uh, we've been talking a lot for the last few days. Yes. And a lot of the new eighth edition is kind of taking from Sigma and from second edition forty k. Yeah. So it's kind of nice to see that they've kind of went. Well, this works, and this and this used to work. Let's kind of squish it's it together. Put it back together again, and, and yeah, and make something that that's uh, really good. Because Dom's in a slightly different position to me, having played second edition. Yes. I haven't. I I basically got involved after fourth. Yeah. Roughly, yeah. I think it was about then that I got really involved with it. So, you know, I'm I'm seeing this all through fresh eyes, and it, but to me, it actually makes more sense than the way we've been playing. Yeah, so yeah, there's a lot of nostalgia <laughs> as well for people yeah. that have been playing it for a lot longer. Yeah. Kind of, but also at the same time, I'm trying not to fall into the trick where the old rule set, I go, well, this is what it used to be like. So it's okay. And yeah, <laughs> this is what I'm doing now. I'm obviously, the games work have changed a yeah. lot since then. So yeah, it's going to be interesting to see what the changes are going to be. And obviously, since that M has moved in for movement, you've lost an I. Yeah. So there's no initiative anymore. No, which is, uh, I think it's quite a nice thing as well. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm also very happy about that in certain ways because... It does mean they're going to be, I think they've mentioned this before, this will be a slight another rule change here, obviously, is mm -hmm. the fact that they've gone with charges, get the first attack, yeah. which I think is brilliant. No, uh, really especially good. for armies like Orcs, yeah. you know, because they're, you know, a lot of the time, they'll even if they get into combat, they're probably striking last yeah. in comparison, because even standard units, initiative four normally nowadays. Yeah, yeah, Orcs, yeah, yeah. <laughs> do suffer, do suffer a lot. Yeah, um, But also, on top of that, I think they've announced that they're doing alternative activations for combat. Yeah, so do you want to explain a little bit how that's yeah. going to work yeah. in so, theory? So in theory, the way I've, I've read that is, this is using the Age of Sigma model slightly because I think there's a couple of differentiations, but essentially, charges will go first, obviously. Yeah. And after that, I think the controlling player, whoever's turn it is, gets to pick which one of their units, who's currently in a combat, gets to attack. Yes. And then when they've done that attack, the other player then gets to do the same thing with another of their units. Yeah. So in theory, uh, this is a little thing, so if you had a squad of Terminators, which you know are reasonably survival in combat, you could say, well, I don't want to worry about them attacking now. I quite fancy getting this other unit to attack now because they're more likely to die, so I want yeah. them to go first. Yeah. And then you get that decision rather than it being taken away from you by either having a slow weapon yeah. or you know, less, less initiative. So, you know, uh, and to a certain extent, I think some people are going to like that. Some people might be 
less liking it because they like the high initiative. Yeah, it's, it's just yeah, yeah. you know. But I, I personally like it. I think it's really good, yeah. especially playing a lot of assault based armies between both of us. Anyway, yes. that is quite nice to add that tactical element where you've now got to decide what's going to be striking first rather than I'm um, higher initiative. I'm always going to be beating you into the ground. Exactly. Yeah. And it also, it turns the movement phase and the movement values into a much more tactical part of the game as well. Yes. Because if you're moving fast, you, you know you've got that edge to yeah. try and get closer to get that essential assault off. And also, um, if you know you can pick when you're attacking as well, you can pre-plan how it's going to roll. Yes, so you can exactly. Sort of, yeah. Sort of and it kind of brings things back to the assault part. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely my game. Um, for, for me, I'm really excited about the... Uh, I've said this quite a few times. Skulls. Yes, the Lord of Skulls, Skulls is coming back. <laughs> You're telling me that the amount of wounds that thing's going to have are going to be insane. And if they keep, I mean, if they keep a similar idea for the Lord of Skulls, where the more wounds it loses, the more attacks it gets. Yeah, yeah, that's going to be quite. Yeah, quite it's going to be formidable. But it may, you know, they're probably going to change the points and stuff like that. We yeah. don't know, but it kind of sounds like a bit more fun. Yeah, and that's another thing we've got to keep in mind. Everyone's got to keep in mind when you're thinking about what we're going to do in eighth. Hopefully, like Game Workshop has said, they've assessed every unit in the game Indeed. and hoping making ineffective units more effective, but yes. also hopefully sorting the points out. So yeah, go, go back to the Lord of Skulls. It's going to be a theme of this video, by the way. Very strong <laughs> feelings about time. the Lord of Skulls. Um, he's like, when you, you load him up, he's over a thousand points of initiative yeah. free. And if you go in combat with a knight or a wraith knight, that's not even half his points. No. He's dead. There's no way of coming out of that without um, serious damage. So, yeah, I think it's kind of bringing that unit, for instance, uh, maybe like the Stomper, if it, if it saves... Well, well I, mean, it even, into I mean, I'm going to bring another little unit that I've always thought was very underpowered here, was like the Gorkonaut and Morkonaut. Yeah, yeah, definitely. You know, yeah. They've been lumbering around, not being having a lot of chance in combat, because, number one, hull points. Yep. You know, one hit, and they could potentially just blow up. You know, a Morkonaut or a Gorkonaut. And now they're you know having wounds and stuff like that makes them a bit more survivable, and yeah, so obviously that's another change we'll come to in a minute. Which yeah, is a, no, that's which yeah, is that's a, a very key lead, point. Leading yeah. into the fact that obviously vehicles have wounds now. Yeah, vehicles have, yeah. Uh, are no longer vehicles, which is not from second. It's gone from sigma, so yeah. you're kind of switching things around. Yes, and um, I kind of I like it. I think it's going to be brilliant. I think I think. The bit I most like about it is the standardisation because you're not having all these different arm values, different facings, lots of what I call argumentative points mm -hmm. where it's just a very standard set of rules and the fact that they've got the, I think, the varying damage effects on, yeah. on the unit so that the more wounds they lose, mm -hmm. the less effective that unit can become. Yes. So I think that, I mean, just speculation, it's probably going to be like a lower in ballistic skill, maybe one of the weapons gets to say... Yeah, so, first, so, on so it'll on. be a lot like the damage table already, but exactly. obviously it'll be, it'll be different, it'll be enhanced in certain ways. Yeah. But yeah, so, so vehicles have gone, so... And they get a save. That's, yeah, and they get a save, yes. Yeah. So the thing. thing is, previously, we've always discussed between ourselves, and we might have mentioned it on the channel before, that monstrous creatures are so amazing in comparison to tanks, yes. where tanks can get popped straight away. One turn. One turn gone. Yeah. Yes. So now suddenly the units like your Hellbrutes, your Dreadnoughts, your Morkonauts, yeah. your Gorkonauts... Everything that's been sitting at the bottom of your pile. Yeah, you can suddenly go, you can dust it off and go, <coughs> oh, actually, I like the model, but up until now, the rules have been rubbish. They've been horrible. So yeah. I might now give this a go, because I like the fluff, yes. I like the model, but I just don't like the rules. Yeah. But also, equally, just sliding another point in there, They've also said that obviously anything can wound anything now. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. However, obviously effectiveness and stuff like that is going to be very varying. Yeah. Uh, I mean, a lot of people have been freaking out. If, if I'm telling you honest about the whole, I've got 500 las guns. If I shoot them at a, at a, a land raider, I could potentially kill it. Yeah. Potentially. Yeah. But that's but, that's 500 las guns. Yeah, is that, yeah. If you've only got a land raider to kill, you ain't worried about like, all the yeah, other we don't, we don't have any wounds <laughs> land raider has yet. You know, it could have 32 wounds for all we know. If you're going by a kind of Judging like a Dreadnought's got, I think, eight wounds, doesn't it? Yeah. So you, you ramp that up to a Land Raider, probably double in size, so maybe at least 16 mm. or something like that. You know, I'm just sort of speculating. I've got no idea, really. No, it's no, just, exactly. it's just it's, that's the, you know, the half inch. And obviously, that brings on to uh, kind of weapon profiles as well. Yeah. They've changed, dram well, I don't know, not dramatically. You've lost some bits and yeah. you've gained other bits. Like, you know, the straight AP value's gone now. Yeah, yeah, so, so it's a save modifier now. Save modifier. So, you'll get, so for instance, I'm going to be the last cannon because that's what we saw today. Yeah. Was that that gets a minus three modifier. Yeah. So if you have a three up save, 
that's effectively gone to a six up save is that correct yeah yeah, yeah. Um, and obviously the higher strength we haven't seen the strength and toughness stuff yet so I'm not going to sort of go into that too yeah. much. I don't know how that's going to work but it's going back to damage as well it's, so it's, back in second edition you had uh, like damage and armor penetration etc so now you've got damage so you do d6 damage from a last cannon hit which would strike off so many wounds yes. off your rhino or your land raider which would be Quite quite interesting as well to bring that back rather so than. So the last count is now D six damage when you do a hit. Yes. So yeah, yeah. When you get through, that's you know um, that that's quite good because it does mean that it, it, it's effectively kind of replacing the damage table in a certain way. Because mm. obviously, if you rolled a six on the damage table, you would do you'd blow it up technically yes. on, on the last count. But now you just do six points of damage. Yes. It's kind of a similar way. Yeah, it's, it, it, it's similar. <clears throat> but then it, it's them bringing down monster yes, creatures that's, yeah, to exactly. the same level that tanks have been Precisely. at. Precisely. It equals the field. Yes, definitely. So it, you're not yeah. having a lot of... So, yeah. which will be quite interesting because you will see the rise, potentially, <laughs> potentially, <laughs> you will see the rise of, like, if you go to a tournament, you'll see like the odd orc player who's like, "Hey, I'm doing it yes. for the while," and everyone's like, "Oh yeah, great!" Well done. Well done, he's, mate. Not, he's not going to win. So proud. But then at the top <laughs> tables, you see the the uh, Tau players, yeah. and because for 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 years now, Tau have had their suits that have always been monster creatures. Yeah. So now, when they're going to be taking more damage from an last cannon hit, for instance. Yeah, yeah, because you know, D six wounds on a, on, a, on a riptide becomes quite a powerful yeah. thing. But obviously, riptide. We don't know how many wounds riptide. They, they could, they, they, I mean, my speculation. Spe- I mean, speculating. You know, if we're, again taking Dreadnought as the one example we've got, if that's got eight wounds, so riptide probably going to have more. Yeah, because yeah. it's a bigger unit in general. So twelve. Yeah. You know, so, but the thing is, you know, you're, you're thinking if you get two lucky shots with something, you, you, it's easily yeah, as good rather than doing. Yeah, and the fact is, they'll or... still get their save, but it will be just worse. Yes. Yeah, because obviously if they take the two up save, whatever they used to have, I mean, this this could change as well. It's it's all speculation, which is just crazy, really. Yeah. Why are we doing a video about yeah, this? Yeah, there's no <laughs> point doing a video about this, is there? Really? So, um, uh, yeah, but yeah, so that's that's weapon profiles, and obviously, um, I think obviously weapon strength is going to have an effect at some point, but we don't know what that's going to do because I've also heard that weapon weapon skill, ballistic skill, uh, obviously they're hard wired now so it's, yeah. a, it's a three plus to hit or a three plus to work yeah. to work. however they're now putting modifiers in yeah so weapons if you're behind hard cover i presume there'll be a modifier to your hit yeah that's my presumption because it would they wouldn't say there's going to be modifiers or is it the cover say you get cover save it's both I think, I think it's both but it's okay. they, they said they, they from what i read both the ballistic skill and weapon skill can have modifiers applied to them yes so okay and yes but likewise with important point if you're in a cover, it adds to your existing save. Yes. So that way, if a last cannon hits you at minus three, yeah. you're behind cover and you have a three up save, yeah. but the ends get to modify to a four up save, yeah. you obviously it becomes a five up save. Exactly. Well, so well, you've still got a form of protection. Yeah. So that's going to be quite interesting to see how that works and then if things are going to change with Marines possibly. So actually, I'm presuming that means the death of invulnerable saves, thinking about it. I don't know. Maybe. Because, well, there's no, no place for them because if you think about it, you're getting a modified save. That's, yeah, that's but that. unless they have a we, hard save, we have the equivalent of pop, uh, possibly like a, a ward save yeah. or something like that. But you get an additional after that. Yeah, yeah. yeah so yeah. that would be interesting. Which is, which is, yeah. As we both don't really play AOS, it's no. kind of like a lot of. Yeah. Hopefully, if you guys play AOS, please put a comment below. But, you know, you guys might be watching this in like two months' time. I'm going, oh, how naive they were. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah, who knows? So the, the other thing that was quite interesting mm-hmm. was obviously they dropped all templates. Yes. And it's all gone. Yep. Um, which is, which is, I I like it. Mm-hmm. I can see why some people might not like it because obviously they may think, well, I could hit more with my template if I'm lucky. Yeah, yeah. Or, or yeah, the, yeah. Scatter, the, the random scatter point where you could potentially hit your own units. I, you know, I quite like that. That's quite a funny point sometimes. Yes. Um, for speeding up the game. Yeah, it speeds up the game. It definitely Cuts stops out arguments. the awkward moments as well. When you put a, you roll a scatter <laughs> dice and the arrow looks like it's pointing that way yeah. and you're like, yes, it's going to hit something. But the player moving the template moves it 
that way. And you're like, and you're like come yeah, on. It's down to interpretation. Yeah, That's it is down to the, interpretation. Uh, well, and also, it also stops things like where someone's put stuff in a teardrop formation. Yep. And you, you're trying to be nice about it. <laughs> and you put a template over the whole lot and you go, are you sure you want to move them there? Yeah. Kind of things like that. You know, yeah, it stops no. some of that happening. Yeah, it could be it quite does. awkward for some people. Yeah, it does, it does put sometimes a bit of a bad taste <laughs> in people's mouths. Yeah. When, uh, not talking from experience here, no. when they put their um, Ravenwing army in a teardrop <laughs> formation in front of the Lord of Skulls with, with the, uh, uh, with the re-rollable uh, Yeah, with the instant cannon. death <laughs> flavour to it. And you're like, I'm sorry about this, but they're, everyone's dead. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, it does prevent yeah. that. And I think it's a good thing, but yeah. we're kind of waiting to see what happens. I, 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 with, I think with it's a kind of one of those things, it's 50-50. I think it, it's yeah. nice. It speeds up. It's one of those things you'll always remember quite fondly, I think, because you'll have those moments where you've done that crazy scare and you've gone, oh, I've killed all my own men. Yeah. Ah, oh, but going so, so going back slightly, yeah. this is what I was thinking earlier. Sniper rifles. Yeah. It, will it be a bit of a... You're going to start seeing more sniper rifles. Because if vehicles start having toughness values, yeah. will you be able to... How will sniper rifles work? Will sniper rifles still have a similar... Well, obviously, role? at the moment, they're rending. Yeah. So you have that... Sniper's chance, as they say, yeah. to take out that. And maybe there'll be weak points. There's, there's so many options they could do with it. Yeah. It's, it's interesting. I've always liked the fluff of, I think it was one of the Gaunt's Ghost books, where they had, obviously, Gaunt's Ghost had a lot of snipers. Yeah. And there was a traitor artillery formation quite close, and the snipers were firing through the vision slits or through vent slits. Yeah, exactly. And yeah. Popping yeah. off the gunners. Yeah. And you think that can happen. In 40k, yeah. that can definitely happen. Except for Land Raiders. Not Except for Land Raiders, Land Raiders no, nothing no, against Land Raiders. They're so yeah. powerful. Only Las Guns. Las Guns, about 500, 500 Las Guns. 500 Las Guns from a conscript thing, which costs a lot of points, will be Land Raider killers. That's, that's, that's what you should watch out for, guys. Seriously. <laughs> that's science. That's, that, that's, you know, Las Guns fired in mass create such an amount of heat yeah. that they become a Las Cannon. Yeah. That's just the way it works. There you go. All right, so next point. <laughs> um... Yeah, so uh, a very brief one because I don't know much about it. Psychic phase has apparently changed. Yeah, that's what I just heard. I think it was on a, one of the Twitter. I think uh, Pete Foley's Twitter feed. He just sort of said, "Yeah, it's gone. Not gone, but changed." Yeah, so to speak. So I don't. There's no information about it. So speculation. Speculate on that if you want in the comments. Go for it. Yeah. So you know. So um, uh, also another small point. There's no shooting in and out of combat. So I think in Age of Sigmar you can. Yeah. I think you can use your no. I think you can use your ranged weapons in combat. But that, okay. You can't do that. So that, that's fair enough. Um, army composition that's a good one yeah so I think they've apparently supplied 14 force organisation charts yeah, these are generic ones the generic ones yes yeah so each army will have their own once French their three. individual codex yes. it's all in one of these five books they will have yeah. their own specific one a bit I'm imagining a bit like the, like the Decuria detachment yeah I think they each have a specific I mean, from, yeah from what I've been hearing it, the more you kind of go into these particular kind of things the more it benefits the way you play. Yes. Yeah, that's really good. Really nice. Is I like, like the idea. Yeah. Especially if you're doing like a fluff-ish yes. based army and you're doing like, for instance, against Dark Angels and you've got your um, your Deathwing. Obviously, you want to do a Deathwing army, Terminators out of two wounds, which is pretty cool. And yes. <laughs> <laughs> no scatter guys, I don't know how deep throw it. But that's interesting. I think they'll just come on now. Yeah, yeah. they just come on. Most likely, I think that's probably what happens. Yeah. Which is already done. But, um, <laughs> yeah, so... It's going to be awesome. You have a Jeffrey Army, and hopefully the, the the perks of that will reflect of the fluff that you're having, and it will be. It it, it, it makes more sense, I think. Yes. It, it gives a lot more options for people, and also it rewards people for saying, for instance, for myself here, Black Templars. If I'm playing Crusade Army, I'm hoping to do something where if I take lots of Crusader squads, it mm -hmm. gives me some kind of benefit, which I, I would love. But obviously, at the moment, I think the main benefit is command points, which is another point that has come up in these discussions. Yes. That I think the the more you stick to the bigger force organisation charts, the more command points you get. Yeah. And I think I believe command points are things that you can issue once per phase. Yeah. Yeah. And they can I've alter, this. They can alter certain things that are happening in that phase. So it's like re-rolls and counter attacks. Yeah. You may be able, like for instance, you may be able to override someone who's charged you. Yes. And say I'm attacking first. Yeah. So like an intercept, like yeah. more hammer yeah. fantasy. But it's a one-off. It's one-off. I'm paying this command point. That's gone to override what you're doing. Yeah. It's kind of like a trump card, isn't it? It's something you keep in your back pocket for that yeah. moment where you're like, I really need these guys to yeah. know I'm out. Mind games. Mind Are you games saying 8th edition <laughs> will be mind yes, games Yes, you want mind games. So so I'm, I'm hoping they even give you a set of cards with the clown points. I'm sort of going, you're holding them like this. It's like a bit of poker face. Yeah. Come on. 
It's like, ooh. It's Some people start creasing the yeah, corners. That's 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 <laughs> Remember the one with the crease on? That's yeah. the one you don't want me to Love put it. down. <laughs> um, uh, what else we've got? So, also, it's another thing. With obviously, we're going to yes. go a little bit of tangent in storage. Yeah. But formations. Formations, I think that you, we're still going to have formations, but hopefully, it will. In my my eyes, hopefully we'll just level it off now and go. Look, they're gone. Yeah, we're going to come out with new ones. New ones. Switch. Because some of the armies, some of the uh, the formations were ridiculous. And also not only that, but not only were they ridiculous, but they were also very generic. Yes. But it's kind of like you could take ones that were possibly meant for like. Let's take Space Marines as an example. You've got the Angel of Death book. You could take as a Black Templar one that you knew was probably meant for White Scars. Yeah. Which okay, that's fair enough, but mm -hmm. fluff wise doesn't make a lot of sense. Yes. Yeah. And. You know, that, that's kind of what I mean. Yeah, yeah. If, you, yeah, yeah. if you're playing a certain type of army, you kind of want to play to your strengths. Yeah. Know, and you want to make it look like that's what you're playing with. I mean, you know... That well, hopefully with these command points as well, from the like your new formations, how you form your army, that will be taken into account by players when they're forming their armies. Yes. Then they'll go, hang on, I'm going to keep it as fluff or as accurate as I possibly can. I'm not going to put this in. But at the same time, what will this mean for tournaments? Well, from I mean, from what we've heard, they've been talking to tournament organisers. Yeah. So odds are they're on board with it. Yeah. Whatever's happened, um, and hopefully with the match play setup they've got, they won't have to do as much rule changes. Yeah. And they'll be able to sort of say, yeah, just come along and play match play rules. Yeah. Okay. Which, yeah, yeah. Which in my opinion is a plus because yes. it means it's less hassle for them. Mm -hmm. So you get more enjoyable for them, and it also it means that there's less comeback from the people playing it when something doesn't go their way because actually. Well, that's actually just how it's written. Yes, yeah. that's, how it's, that's how we're playing yeah, it. So it's, this is basically the, yeah. the, the tournament organisers yeah. may not be handing out leaflets of rules, no. but we'll put them in... ITC is an example? Yeah, that's, ITC, yeah. yeah. So yeah. they won't be putting in their um, their rule sets, but they will still have certain restrictions, I yeah. think, further down the lines. But Definitely. Yeah. Well, once stuff sort of played out a bit, yeah. they'll be able to sort of say, well, actually, that's a bit stupid. Yeah. You know? But then, hopefully, if that's a regular issue... That'll get back to GW now, and they'll say, "Yeah, we'll roll we'll that the next release." You know, things like that. It's if it's affecting the game that much. Yeah, and I think also keep in mind. Um, obviously, we're being very really positive here, but um, you're going to have the cheese hunters out there. <laughs> and it isn't a bad thing. If no. you're that style of player, it's, you're, you're, it's, you will look for every advantage that you can find. And if you're a cheese hunter, I don't know why you're watching this channel. No. To be honest, <laughs> no. so, if, you want, if you do want my book of ineffective lists, it is out soon. Yeah, yeah, yeah we'll be releasing that along. Two hundred pounds a book. Yeah. All money will go into our pockets. Um, but, yeah, I think cheese, there, there will be cheese hunters. And, of course, when the cheese hunters start coming out, they will find it and tournament organisers will go yay or nay and then start putting restrictions in yes. to keep, keep everyone on an even... Yeah. No, which is, which is... Which is, they which can, is, yeah, which is good. Which is, which is fair enough. I think, you know, because you still need to have that flexibility to change things around. Yeah, if, definitely. If there's something being abused, because... It's not, it's not fun. No, yeah, whatever game, yeah. it can be a, a war game, it can be a computer There's clever game. people out there. They'll yeah. look at things and go, oh, that's an quite well with that. I can yeah. mix and match that, and that makes them yes. ridiculous. And that's, exactly. the, that's just the way it is. Um, oh, I, was just, I was talking about another rule, actually, because obviously D-weapons have gone now. They have gone. D-weapons have gone. Yeah. Um, Poor Rafe Knights. I mean, technically, in my opinion, it actually what it's done is actually pay for everything to be a D-style weapon now, with yeah. the extra wounds. Yes. Obviously, I have a suspicion that things like cover saves and things like that Will probably stay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I don't think they'll. Um, yeah, they won't override it if you roll a certain value on it. But I imagine they'll be, you'll get more wounds on weapons that powerful because there's no. Oh yeah. There's yeah, no, cap, there's there's no cap on ten strength. Yes. So apparently we can get crazy things like fifteen strength on weapons and things like that, which is fine because it also means that toughness and wounds can go up much higher as well. Mm. Um, so yeah, that's quite that's quite a big change. Yeah. I, I, in my opinion, because D weapons have definitely led the power curve. In certain armies, yeah, in, in yeah, some respects, you know that, yeah, that that and lots of shots and D weapons have been two things that have been yeah, I don't, really, yeah, D weapons are strong. I don't yeah. think the the be all and end all, no, um, but they are definitely uh, a nasty thing to no. face if you're you're not quite kitted out to do no, all of it. So yeah, this is true. Yeah. D weapons going. It was it was also more the point that you know you know that if you get hit with one and they roll a six, that's basically it. Yes, you don't have a chance to. Sort of recover from that particular. No, no, it's game right. over. Which, yeah, so that's now been, I mean, that's been pulled back a bit now, but, yeah. but at the same time, it's also paved yeah. the way for LAS cannons, as an example, to have D6 wounds on them. Yes. So potentially you have other things that cause a lot of wounds, but 
in a more kind of controlled manner and yeah. ramped up depending on the power of the weapon, which I yeah. think is quite nice because it, it puts, I think, value in lower weapons and in higher weapons in the same way. Yeah, it takes away a bit yeah. from the specialist weapons that, and such. Yeah. But I think, yeah, that you'll see, start seeing more like, um, for Flam instance... Flamers, for us, aren't they? Flamers, yeah. missile launchers might yeah. be coming back. Because AP3, people didn't really go AP3 no. because if you go AP2 or 1, you can instantly pop a tank. Yes. AP3, and it's strength 8, so it'll crack yeah. well. It, yeah, if, no, it might be strength 8. If they go the same style, because if you look at the bolter profile, it's not changed a lot apart from they've removed the modifier. Yes. And it's now a zero yeah. modifier on armour. But if you took a crack missile as an example, which was strength 8 AP3, mm -hmm. yeah. um, that could be the same, but maybe a minus 2 armour save. Because yeah. obviously if a last can is minus 3, it's very unlikely well, that's to it. minus 2. Yeah, you're going to be starting, just, like I said, seeing the rows of certain other weapons. Like auto cannons as well, another one that yes. I've been underrated for a very strength, long time. High strength will probably give it a modifier. Yeah, yeah well, strength AP. will give it a modifier, that's which will be needed. Exactly, yeah. Because before AP4, what that kill? A orc with every armour. Yeah. That'd be rubbish. <laughs> well, there's, there's what we're saying is there's stuff that you just looked at and went there's no point using it because and that's what they've said yeah. in the FAQ they've gone and gone look stuff you've used before it's still there it's still good but stuff that you haven't used you have to think about yes yeah, you now might consider yeah. a bit more which is a good move by GW because for instance gets. as an example standard flamers yeah I wouldn't say they got used a lot depends, depends on, on the army. Army. it depends yeah. on what you were, if you knew what you were playing against you would possibly take them but now because they have standard D6 yeah, and the wounds will be applied on a single model by the looks of it, even mm -hmm. if it's on its own. So a unit and the model. Yeah, um, you could potentially cause six wounds on one. Yeah, one thing, which is nice. So yeah, it'd be interesting. It's, it's just interesting how it all, it all pan out. I mean, I yeah, think it'd be interesting to see what people's play style is when it comes to games. How they're going to be deploying their troops now? Because obviously, if you are going as a heavy flamer army, for instance, if, if you're facing as a hell drake, yes, you would scatter the best space, you can. space out and now. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. It's going to hit you wherever you, you are. You will hug cover now, yeah. in my opinion, like a, like an army would. Yeah. You would sort of go, I want to get in that cover, get my cover save up, rather than sort of, and I don't mind if I'm bunched up. Also, I think it will represent on the game, on the board, yeah. the fluid movement of troops. Because, yes. the, you know, you it's constantly going. You've got to think of 40k as like a constant battle that's not stopping, right. and people are just running. So people will be running into flames. Or if that a hell drake comes to the flak, yeah, it's, it's yeah, a marine going. isn't going to go. Oh, that's a flamer. I better hold back. They're yeah. going to, they, you know, they're in a sealed suit. They're, they know it's going to hurt, but they're going to move forward. <laughs> yeah, four yeah. old marines, four old marines, eh? And those chaos marines, yeah. So, because um, the other thing we heard was, I think today it did get mentioned that I think Legion and Chapter Tactics were still yes. knocking about, so which is great. Gone, which is fantastic because obviously the Legion stuff they literally just come back so if they got rid of that I think they would have had a lot of unhappy people yeah, in about five seconds chaos so, players would yeah. be rather live yes um, but which is great because it does keep with the theme yes. and you can literally just go into 8th now without panicking about what's going to happen to your army and personally I think the way that if you think about the way they're going to be doing uh, the rules now and also like the books the new books stuff like that I think it gives a lot more scope for them to sort of go oh, we're going to do a book on Death Guard we're going to do a book on the whatever yeah. we're going to do because well, you've seen it in AOS. Yeah, you've seen that. If they find an army, if the, if the faction's there and they want to do a bit of something on it, they'll they'll do a book for it. And the thing is, they don't have to make an expensive book anymore. You know? No, 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 no. Yeah, I mean, they've already said. I think that I think the, the the five books are going to be less expensive than the current codexes. Yeah, and those books are going to be covering a lot. A lot. Them. I mean, they're apparently covering the whole range. So yeah, that's that's a, that's great though. Uh, including also, before I forget, I think Forge Old mentioned today that they are also covering the new rules on release. However, they haven't announced how they're going to be. I predict a PDF download from the website, and then like they've done previously in every other edition, they release a PDF yeah. for your, for instance, your Red Scorpions. So they had a six edition update, which was the last one. It's been a long time, so in my opinion, I see that as a big positive for anyone yeah. who's got old style four drive armies that haven't had an update for since sixth edition. Yeah, that you will now see a flood of all these new rules come out for them, which is fantastic because it means everything's back up to date on level playing field. Yes, exactly, yes. Yeah. So just, that's the thing as well to remember about 40k, like previous um, moves from 6th to 7th, for instance. You end up with a codex and an FAQ, which is almost as thick as yeah. your codex. Yeah. So now everyone's just going, like, yeah. well, what about, I mean, take, take, take your chaos, for example. I mean, how many books? Yeah, so on average, I take three books. Three, three books, but you put, you've got about five. I yeah, think. yeah, I've got, I've got five books. in total, which is... It might be ridiculous. Yeah, it is. Just yeah. to play a game. I mean, no, I, 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 you know, it's you not know, feasible Marines at all. It's, it's two to three, depending yeah. on what you bring with it. You know, that's that's the because five books add a yeah. lot of weight to your box. <laughs> <laughs> Especially if you go on a flight or something. Yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> um, so yeah, yeah. So it's it's nice that everything's back down to how it was, and of course yeah. there is going to be the gradual cro 
Codex creep. Yes. Uh, of the next several years, even though Codex have gone, there will be obviously a. It will come back because they, yeah. you know, when, when the Codex game. is released, it's going to unbalance it again. Yeah. But if they stick to what they're saying about having a regular rules update every year, yes, with the core rules, that should hopefully go and, and bring that back down each time. Free. You reckon yes, I, free I, I think what they'll do is a free download, but they'll also supply stuff like a general's handbook. Which probably has all the all the points costs in the back and stuff like that if they've been updated because that's quite similar to what they were doing with the General's Handbook. Yeah. Uh, for the AOS. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so uh, th that's why I think. Uh, yeah, if it's free, yeah. I can't see people moaning about it. Well, you can still see people moaning. There'll about be it. people moaning about it. it there's, at the end of the day, there's. And we know who you we, are. Yes, we know who you are. We about. know who you are, moaners. Yes, moaners. That's, yeah. <laughs> you don't play 40k. Yeah, you just like moaning, you're about, like moaning it. about it. You don't moaning about it. Don't play it. You just moan about it. Right. Just leave it. Okay, move on. Right, so what's our next point, Tom, we're going to talk about? Um, well, I think that's the majority of stuff there, I think, we've covered, which has been released at the moment. I'll just have a quick look at my notes. Um, no, I think I think actually we've gone through pretty... Oh, okay, one small point. Apparently flyers are now just like every other unit. They're not actually a specific unit. Okay. So they'll still they'll get their own individual rules as a, fly, you know, as a unit on their unit sheet or whatever, as a flyer, but I don't think they're... They're treated any differently, so they're still get. I think they've still got uh, toughness wounds and all that stuff. So they'll be the okay. same. same Starts of flying once as quick. So will yeah. flyers still get hard to hit, or will they be treated bad? That flyer? is a question that's interesting because back when yeah. Valkyries were added in, they were treated as skimmers. Yeah, and so they were easy to hit, but still you had to, you can move them around. It would be stuff. interesting to see if they keep things like the skimmers rule and stuff like that in place. Yeah. Um, I just don't know. It's too. There's too many options they could go mm. with on there because giving everything a toughness rating kind of negates the purpose of having it jink anymore. I suppose For, maybe to increase cover save, perhaps. Yeah, well, so it, it, gets save. Save. it gets the save. It gets the save. That's it. Jinks. That, yeah. Well, I mean, at the moment, obviously, because because they're going to have a save anyway. Yeah. My bet is it will probably increase the save or give it a modifier Possibly. to increase its cover I save. I still think that flyer should be hard to hit. Yeah. Um, rather than put them back into skimmer mode, I think they should still be hard to hit. And of course, now that everything can do damage to them, it just levels it out. Yes. Because obviously, if you, you had a, a hell drake, if the hell drake comes Previously, on, yeah, it was a bit unfair. It, yeah, yeah, it, it literally it's... comes on and incinerates everything. But now, if the squad of marines see a hell drake come on, yeah. they can just fire up. So I wouldn't say air. about every single flying unit. No, not some of them were pretty. You know, like take a storm tower as an example, because yeah. it's very paper thin. There's always a shooter's chance that if you fire a lot of weaponry at it, it'll yeah. go down. But a Helldrake being 12, uh, uh, like a Storm Raven, yeah. uh, you know, all that kind of stuff, it was it, sometimes if you didn't have that in your army or you didn't have something to deal with it, it made it particularly annoying. Yeah. For you yeah. to sort You can see the frustration. Yeah. So hopefully they're, they've kind of addressed this now with putting toughness rather than armor values in. Yeah. And they all kind of level that out instead of like at an event, for instance, you'd have Chaos players taking yeah. three Helldrakes or more, <laughs> or six Helldrakes. <laughs> Well, just take, take as many as you want. Yeah, yeah take all the drinks you want. Yeah. At least now, if someone comes to the board with several, you don't necessarily curse the player and um, get upset about it. Get upset about it. Yeah, they just, just can address it. Because in the day when you have games, sometimes when you're, you're looking at the player, you can tell they're annoyed. Yeah. Even though they're not. They're both very cordial, but you can see underneath their ceiling. Yeah. <laughs> a little, little tear. A little tear down the eye. And, so and lock. Uh, possibly lock. packing up very quickly after the game's finished and yeah. leaving. Yeah, not that we've ever done that before. We've never, we've never done that for no. a double tournament. Yeah, and then later on, found out we've won the tournament. Yeah, and had to go back with tails between our legs. Very awkward. <laughs> <laughs> but um, yeah, I think that's pretty much most of the points we've yeah. uh, had tonight written down. So yeah. hopefully, you guys have uh, listened, accepted what yeah. we've got to say. Hope you enjoyed it as well. Yeah, hope we weren't too bad. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, if you've got any comments, any questions, cool. please put them below. And uh, we'll address them. And if you're watching this in like six months' time and you realise that we're talking absolute rubbish, please turn off now. Turn off. In fact, in fact, actually, have our apologies. You should have turned off probably at the beginning of the video. Or but. if we were right about everything in six months' time yeah. and um, you go, wow, these guys are good, please just subscribe. Yeah. Tell yeah. your or friends. To subscribe. Even subscribe right now because why not? Yeah. I you're going to be the loose. I can't see a reason why you wouldn't subscribe right now. No, you, we'll, you got to this point in the video. You put up with us for almost probably what we're talking about, half an hour now. Yeah, yeah. I would have subscribed. I would have. I would have, been, I would have literally going. Why aren't these guys shutting up and finishing the video? Yeah, like right now. Maybe we should just go. Yeah, maybe we should. Anyway, guys, thank you so much for watching. This is Tom. Hands on from Plateau Studios, and we'll see you soon. Take care.